Hey guys and welcome to another Football Manager video. In this one I'm going to be still in my Pentagon save and I'm going to be signing a striker for Arsenal in the distant future in 2044 and we're going to be using the app and spreadsheet that I use and have covered in recent previous videos to make the signing. This is my tactic. My Arsenal team is a very strong team now. We just won the Champions League. I've been the manager of Arsenal for seven or eight years. I want to stick around for a few more years and put the club onto a solid financial footing and then I'm going to resign and go and win the African Champions League and complete my Pentagon Challenge. But for now, this is our first 11 and in particular. These are our starting strikers. So they're excellent players. We've got, for example, this guy, Perkovic, is our best striker. This is the current Ballon d'Or holder in-game. And as you can see, he's amazing. 16 acceleration, 16 pace, 18 composure, 19 finishing, 17 off the ball. Plenty of everything else is good as well. Uh, and he's been a, a heavy scorer for us for a long time. We signed him for 90 million right at the start of me being the manager of this club in this save. Uh, and he's been worth 90 million. He's been one of the best players in the world. So we've got players like this. And if you go to this squad view, which is the way I like to think of the game, with a starting player and, and a reserve at each of the players, at each of the positions in my tactic, we have three striker positions. A left-sided player I like to be um, left-footed and then two others a center and a right hand side all advance forwards on attack and if you look at these players using the scoring system which is uh, an app that I have uh, developed with a couple of other guys and is here and is detailed in my other previous videos um, identified how good these players are as a blend of their attributes so it's out of 20 blended by which attributes I think are most important and Perkovic I just showed you 16.6 .6 is the best of them and then there's two other really good players. One called Malenkovic, um, who is a left-footed player, is also outstanding, 26 years old. And then a right-sided player called Ismail, also excellent. What we've got, and this is why I'm looking to sign a striker, the backup here on the left is another excellent player called Lewis. Again, a completely excellent player, England international, uh, 17 acceleration and pace, rotates into the side, plays a lot of minutes. Um, and uh, is, is an outstanding player. But what we've got, if we look at the right-hand side, the current uh, two backups on the right-hand side, a guy called Adrisu and a guy called Fernandez. the blended average is a bit lower, 15 as opposed to 16. And these players just aren't quite as good. And that's fine because they're the backups and they're also young players that are improving. Here's Fernandez, very good, 17 pace, 16 in acceleration. Uh, he's only got composure 13, which is why the scoring system doesn't rate him as highly as the others. That's the main reason why. And as we, we, we keep playing Fernandez, giving him minutes, or at least that's the plan, because we want that composure to grow, get that towards 15, and then he'd be a completely elite forward. And then we've also got uh, another player, Idrissou. And Idrissou, who was signed from Hearts of Oak and one of the many academies, I'm sure if you're watching this, you know to go and track and football manager of 200,000. You know, now his value is at 30 million. He's got 15 pace, 17, 15 acceleration, 17 pace, 15 composure, finishing. It still thinks he's a good championship player. That's almost certainly not right. And if I give this guy lots of minutes, I think he'll score lots of goals. What I'm trying to think through is, do I keep Adrisu and Fernandez, or do I go for one of those two, maybe send the other one on loan or sell the other one and use the proceeds put towards another player that's about as good as Lewis? So on the right-hand side, in that centre right-hand position, if we need an impact substitute for those positions, for example, in a Champions League knockout game, you know, instead of calling on these guys who I don't think are quite ready for that kind of level, I think they're fine in the Premier League, but I think in a Champions League knockout stage game against... At Barcelona, we probably don't want to call on these guys. I'd quite like one of these two to be upgraded to a top tier player. All right, so in my previous video, uh, at the end of that video, I went through in slow detail how I built a spreadsheet with the trajectory or the potential of a bunch of uh, strikers. And here I'm just going to go through how do we find those strikers before we get into looking at the spreadsheet and then actually trying to sign. The strikers so to begin with i set a player filter and the player filter is a very demanding one it's basically setting out what i think a um a, a strong forward looks like it'd be a sort of backup in a champions league squad so a squad of a manchester city or now my arsenal an outstanding club what would their 
backups that like they need to be at least as good as that so for example we've got pace 15 acceleration 15 but then there's a bunch of other things as well for various other attributes that the scoring system thinks are important that i think are important in the game so basically saying if you've got any age players that meet that hurdle then we'll put those players into a shortlist so i'm just going to select all of those and put those into my striker shortlist but then what i want to do is work backwards to try to figure out what young players might look like and put those in the shortlist too so just based on this which is a, a previous video i made which in turn is based on looking at 4,000 new gens and trying to work out how they grow here's some sort of rough sense of of how they grow i'm not going to try to be specific on this but i'm simply going to do is go to my player search filter and i'm going to say right i'm going to take one off every attribute um, but you have to be under the age of 23 because we know players progress through to age 24 so that gives me a 16 more names and i'll take those names oops I'll take those names and add those to my strikers um, shortlist as well. Uh, then I'm going to do exactly the same again and I'm going to reduce it by another one. But this time you need to be older than, say, 20. And that's going to bring forward another load of names and starting to get some cheaper ones like this uh, young Colombian, which is always good in Football Manager to sign, of course, the young South Americans. Um, you could just avoid absolutely all of this stuff to the spreadsheets and just sign, of course, all the young South Americans with five stars and you'll probably do just as well in Football Manager. But hey, I'm just going to show you how I do mine. And then we'll just take uh, another minus one and we'll say you can't be older than, say, 17. Well, let's call it 18 for these ones. Uh, and you'll get only the three more, including a particularly impressive 16-year-old with five-star ability who we should probably rush off and sign, but let's see what the um, what the spreadsheet says uh, once I put these guys through. So I've been through and I've put together this, uh, the scoring system first and then this spreadsheet. So in my previous video, you'll see uh, what this spreadsheet is trying to do. Basically, there's all the roles in my tactic from sweeper, keeper and defend, wing back, uh, ball playing defender, secundo Vlandetta and attack and advance forward on attack which is the one we're looking at at the moment and it's the outcome of the scoring system I put in red here the players in our squad at Arsenal you can see the clubs in this column here and if you then sort it you'll see who the best strikers are in the world according to the scoring system and the best striker in the world is Man City striker he's 32 years old um, there's no way I'll be able to sign him he's the best player probably in the game at the moment is the kind of Leo Messi of this save right now. He's a phenomenal player. Um, we can't sign him. The other thing that this spreadsheet does, as well as just looking at how good a player is, is also what trajectory is the player on. So if uh, it's benchmarked against a decent Premier League player, which is 100%, and there's a number on here of, I think it's 30, I'll tell you because it's in this trajectory tab here, um, by the age of 24, a Premier League level player, according to me, a study of 4,000 new gens, I did again, there's a video on that. I'll link it in the description. Uh, gets to about 14.5 on the scoring system. We can see here the top players in the world go well beyond 14.5. This one's at 17, but you know, the best, best were kind of 16 point something. And then the next step behind is 15 point something. Um, if the trajectory through to 14.5 is the trajectory through to 100%, uh, the new gem might start at 10 and end up at 14.5 on a blended basis, and that's what 100% looks like. This column is just trying to simply say, how much better than that are you? Uh, and if you sort for that, then what you'll get, a couple of things happen. One is um, we still get Palais at the top because he's still the best in the world, but a lot of younger players come up. If you look at the age, players like this guy, for example, come up. Havard Hansen, who it says Crystal Palace, but he's out at Crystal Palace on loan from me. He's only a 14.7 on the scoring system, not 16 or 17 like the best Champions League player, players. But he's only 19 years old. So if you look at someone like Hansen, um, he's, um, you know, he comes up as a wonder kid in games. He's very good. He doesn't actually have that much potential ability according to um, what our scouts are saying. But he's got all the things you look for from a player and he's only 19. And so there is some chance he will go on to be better than this or keep a track of that as time goes on. He's on loan and he's scoring goals away 
on loan. So that's what we've got. Then to just sort of take it onto, okay, well, that's all very interesting, but who do we sign? We've got the value here. We've got a value range in the game. It's low to high. These are the high ones. So we know the values and we know what I'll call the trajectories with these percentages where high is good, more than about 110% is Champions League good or on path to being Champions League good. And then I've made it a scatter chart. So across the, the axis here, we've got the uh, the percentages again. And down here, you can't, I haven't labeled the axis, but this is money. So this is 250 million, 200 million pounds. This is free. And then we've got um, along here, um, the, the best players up to 125. So there's that Pele as again, he's the sort of top right player. He's inaccessibly expensive, but he's also the absolute best. And there's Perkovic, the red ones. Uh, blue is all the players in other clubs. And then red is the ones in my Arsenal squad. The players that, that I assign do quite well on this analysis if it sort of goes a bit like that, roughly, um, where how much it costs to buy the potential, obviously, with the, these top, top guys over here. And then, yeah, where my interest is, is is predominantly in, you know, above the curve, where is there, you know, relative value for money? Um, and, you know, also it's probably interesting that there are players down here, and these will be young players, we'll come and look at ages in a minute, where, you know, they're, they're relatively cheap and there's lots of potential. And as you can say, I've signed loads of those for Arsenal already. I've got them all out on loan and developing, but maybe I should sign more. So I've kind of got two jumps. You know, one is over here and then one is here. Both of these are interesting strikers. Here would be more of a ready-made uh, upgrade on um, the guys I've got at the minute. There's Fernandez. I've just drawn a line across it. But, you know, there's Fernandez there. And um, Adrissu, you can't actually see because he's behind, but Adrissu is there. So there's, these these are my guys at the minute. You know, can we find you know maybe a slightly older versions who are more oven ready to play Champions League minutes? And yeah, you know, maybe it's these guys. So I'm going to focus on. You've got Van der Kolk, Fajardo, Kamaj. I actually know this guy Seneville is is older, um, so not him. But these guys, and then these younger guys. If we come back into the um, the spreadsheet here, then we can just sort of see. Where we're going to look there's Fajardo he's interesting not this next guy because he's not for sale that's what blank means there's van der Kolk the next guy is 200 million that's not going to work for us 160 million 190 million no this Seneville is 33 years old that's a no this guy's not for sale Tenconi's 200 million that's a no Kamaj was in that little graph so we'll look at him Kareka, who is um, a bit younger, age 21, is interesting. Not the guy, 100 million. Yes, Cardoni. Yes, McManus, we saw. Um, and I think that's pretty much our list. All right, so here's the players in a short list. And the first thing uh, I've done is I've added, well, I'll just sort this by, yeah. So I've added Albers and Peleas because they're the sort of benchmark best strikers in the world. And then they're the guys that we saw on the scatter chart. So there was Kamaj, Fajardo and Van der Kolk as the sort of oven ready. These guys are good now. And then there was the potential guys, which was McManus, Cardoni and Kareka. So what I'll do is they're all interested in signings. So that's good. I guess I'll leave that on just for good order. And then I've created a view here, which is the for the advance forward on attack, the attributes that are of most interest. And if I maybe just sort this by acceleration, um, then what we've got here is, okay, here's all our players, but now here's a view where you can see acceleration, pace, finishing as the sort of main ones the scoring system looks for. And there's other videos on my channel about what the best attributes by position are, according to me. I'm not saying it's definitely right, but that's what I'm looking for when I'm looking for an advance forward, mainly acceleration, pace, and finishing, and then a bunch of other, the sort of, here's the sort of next best ones, and then here's all the others. And, um, We've got, uh, what's that, off the ball, composure, dribbling, first touch technique. In particular, I'm looking at off the ball and composure for what it's worth. Um, so when I sort it like that, you can see this van der Kolk guy who, yes, okay, is 100 million, but he has got 18 acceleration. And even in this company of the best, best players in the world, there's nobody else that can touch 18 accelerations. So this guy's got something which is unusual and really really good yes okay accelerations out of 20 but it turns out for really really good forwards and um, football manager in my save at this point in in the future 
17 is elite and then 18 is is the best so that's good um you know pace again you can see van der Kolk and Kamash doing well um and then uh finishing not quite as good as Pelez. so Pelez is the absolute benchmark he's got 20 finishing nobody else has got 20 finishing i don't know how much finishing matches i've i've had guys in fm where the finishing's like two and they still score but you know i've got i've got it in there for the time being and then all the stuff you know Pelez is 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 better on, on off the ball composure and ship but but van der kolk is looking pretty good so if we if we look at, at van der kolk's plan yes it's a hundred million but this is what you get for 100 million it says it's world class wants to move to bigger club the right foot which is what i want i'm going to be able to play down the middle or on the right jumping reach eight i'd like it to be higher to be the guy who plays down the middle um but you know that that is a player that um is certainly interesting and and i think if we can just compare van der kolk and pelez this is the best player in the world you know van der kolk is not as good as pelez but no one is no one can touch this guy who's the best player in the game but he's pretty good so that's a good start so um and if we look at albers who's probably the second best striker and if, let's look at Perkovic, who is our best striker and is excellent for us. Yeah, Perkovic is better, but physically, Van der Kolk is better. So maybe they're a good combination with Perkovic as a left footer and Van der Kolk as a right footer. So he's definitely one that I'm sort of thinking that's interesting. And then we had in our, if you remember, we had that scatter graph. Um, we, had, um, we had Van der Kolk in an interesting group. And we had, along with that, we had a guy called... Fajardo and then a guy called Kamaj. Those were the ones that we thought were interesting. So if we go back uh, and look for those guys. So where is Fajardo? Fajardo is here. So acceleration only 15 and Kamaj 17. But let's look at Fajardo against Van der Kolk. Um, so here you're getting less... Um, on the the raw speed, which is something I think the game engine thinks is really important, but he's much better in the air, and he's got whatever attacking amounts to meaning, and so we can can just compare the two. Hasn't got the acceleration, which I find really um, really important, but has got twenty composure, <laughs> nineteen off the ball, eighteen finishing, um, and the jumping reach fifteen versus eight. So I guess if you were going to design your ideal forward line, oops. And you were going to look at this tactic where you've got a lead the line striker in the middle and then a player who plays almost as a sort of striker slash winger on the right. Then Van der Kolk would be better in here or Fajardo is better down the middle. I don't know which of those two I value more. In fact, I don't, I just don't know at all. Um, what we could do is just, again, let's compare against Fernandez, who is the guy who at the minute is our backup right-sided player. And we should find that Van der Kolk is a clear upgrade so you know if we did a transaction for example where we sold fernandez for 40 or 50 million and spent the difference on on the van der kolk that that is a transaction i'd be quite interested in doing um i think the other thing uh, is just look at kamaj maybe if we look at kamaj against um van der kolk as well he's the other one that's interesting and he's sort of he's, he's, he's again jumping reach seven so he's again that guy on the right side probably even more so than van der Kolk is. He hasn't really got um, the sort of aerial ability. So I think Kamaj is probably a second place to, to van der Kolk, and, but a similar player. And then if we compare him against, uh, what was the name of the other one, Fajardo, um, you know, he's, he's probably a bit less attractive than Fajardo and hasn't got the big match consistency. I think Kamaj is probably out. We're, we're not interested in Kamaj, so not for 80 million. Would have been interested, you know, when he was younger uh, and cheaper, but I think he's out. Now, if we look at the potential guys, um, and if we just come back to, we've got, if we just click it on the on the potential thing, I think Cardoni and McManus are probably less interesting. Um, they are cheap. Cardoni is very cheap, actually, so just as a sort of player trading option. So I think we'll, if we remove McManus because he's more expensive and basically the similar idea to Cardoni. But let's look at the Kareka versus Cardoni just to sort of have a look at what we've got there. And there it thinks Cardoni is better. But remember, Kareka is younger. So if we go back to the to the spreadsheet uh, and we just simply ask it between Kareka and Cardoni, 
tell me the percentage it's saying just if you adjust for how old they are Kareka is 1.1 years younger than Cardoni and yes he's not quite as good but he'll probably develop in the same way in the time so they're basically about as good as each other even though you can't quite see that on this but type of player Cardoni you can see is a bit more well-rounded he's got the aerial he's 6'2 and again if you look at the the jumping reach you're going to see that Cardoni is probably the down the middle and Kareka is more the right and that's actually interesting to me because what I think that might be telling me is if I went to buy I might buy try to buy two and I might try to buy Van der Kolk who's the more expensive one at 100 million um, and, and that's expensive but he'll play more on the right not down the middle and then when you think about the players we're trying to develop we might go for players that are the down the middle which is the Cardoni and he's only 6 million he's presumably got a release clause or something like that but his value is plainly much much better than than 6.2 million he's got a release clause and he's 21 as well which means he won't count as under 21 as a foreign under 21 signing we can only have six of those a year as a Premier League club but this guy because he's already turned 21 he's just he's just about to turn 22 apparently according to yeah he is um so you know that would be even though the stars say you know decent Premier League I think he's probably better than that yes he's got injury proneness issues he's got all sorts but but the spreadsheet's basically saying this guy's good enough to play in you know at a solid level now well, let's see what was his score 15.4 and how does that compare with um Fernando let's compare him to Adrissu who's probably my weaker of my the players in my squad at the moment so let's have a look um there's Adrissu and yeah so Cardoni is not as quick he's not as, and again Adrissu is kind of on the right guy and Cardoni is a down the middle guy so actually if we sold one of Adrissu or Fernandez um, and you know signed a Cardoni, for example, to fill a slot in the squad, uh, that would be a down the middle guy, but a backup. And Van der Kolk. So I quite like the idea. It is either going to be Cardoni plus Van der Kolk would be one route, or on the second route would be Fajardo plus Kareka. Now. Yes, we want to sign players, but you're also looking, it's not just a portfolio of players you're trying to sign. It's a portfolio of contracts. So, you know, it's let's see what Van der Kolk wants and then also see what Fajardo wants and what their clubs want. All right, so we're back and now we're in the future and where the two players have agreed to sign for us. So we've got Fajardo here, do we accept? And then Van der Kolk here, do we accept? So let's just remind ourselves of the two players. Um, but you've got Van der Kolk and then you've got um, Fajardo. And Van der Kolk is, is lightning quick. Um, and uh, is a uh, much better acceleration uh, forward, but then uh, Fajardo's got jumping reach and is more of a lead the line forward. Um, Fajardo's a couple of years older, um, and if you look at what the game's telling us, then it tells us it likes Fajardo more. It says that you know that's a four and a half star player, and, and Van der Kolk is only a four star player. Um, you've got all the hidden ratings are fantastic on Fajardo stuff like big ratings and big matches consistency um, but then it's the same on Van der Kolk here you've got the, the adaptability is a minus so you know that's just something that we'd have to bear in mind if we did sign him then maybe in the first, seri uh, first season he wouldn't be quite as good as he would be in the se seasons afterwards but there's not a lot of negativity on either they're both elite players so need to decide which one to go for so that's what they look like as players Let's just look at the contract piece. So I did a little, um, let's just reminder on the sorry, on the scoring system, Fajardo slightly higher, 16.4 plus 16.2. I wouldn't look at that. I'd, I'd view them as pretty much in the same tier. And our two players at 16.2 on the squad at the minute are absolutely outstanding. So they're both clearly outstanding. So here's the contract. So not just the players, but the contract. This is a side-by-side -side analysis of the cost. So um, these are the um, we end up negotiating these wages with the players. So Van der Kolk wanted the 175 a week, Fajardo 220. Um, I think they both accepted regular starters, so there won't be any problem with playing time. The day one fee on Van der Kolk is higher, 109 million plays 64 for Fajardo. So you think, well, that makes Van der Kolk more expensive. But if you add up five years worth of wages, the signing on fee and agent fee asks, and then a view on the year five value. Obviously, this is sort of um, at the end of year five, what, at the end of their contract, what is the player worth? And really, I guess you'd do the sale at you know 
the end of year four, even three and a half, if you really were not going to sign a new contract. But you know, just to try and put something in which represents what's the what's the player worth at the end, not just at the beginning. And so if what I've done there for Van der Kolk, I've said 80% of the upfront value because he's going to be age 24 on signing and age 29 in five years' time. And then for Fajardo, um, who's two years old, he'll be age 31. So he needs to be knocked down a bit. So I put 65, not 80 numbers just completely plucked out of the air. But the point of the numbers is if you add all that up, um, then that actually means if you think of it in terms of cost per year, Fajardo, who looks cheaper on the surface, is actually more expensive so between the two which one's more expensive well you need to make a few assumptions but i think marginally fajardo is more expensive they're both very expensive but you know we're talking here about players where um we're trying to we're trying to um we're trying to win the champions league and so you know this is a lot of money for a backup forward but we're trying to win the champions league the other thing is for fernandez who's the player um that um is currently in the slot these guys will fill um, we've got a couple of offers at the sort of 40 million mark. So, you know, that needs to be sort of netted off when we look at the the players. I think on balance, I'm, I'm looking at van der Kolk first and foremost out of these two. And the main reason why, as I say, on the, the economics of it, he might be marginally the cheaper player. But if you look at the difference um, here, the main thing that really jumps out to me is this one on acceleration. If you If you have been watching my previous videos, you may have seen this one. Um, best, best attributes by position I'll put a link in the description uh, and what it basically is doing is um, relaying on something I read on FM Arena which in turn came from some Chinese developers who had tried to back sell football manager and tried to come up with a bunch of analysis of what the most important attributes are by position and this on the left is the grid that came from them and you can see that it thinks the most important single attribute for a forward advanced forward on attack is is acceleration now um, the scoring system accounts for that and it tries to account for all the, the various weightings you can see on the screen here but the point it's trying to tell you is the most important thing is acceleration so if you if you trust that and think that's got meaning then you know between these two players if you say everything else is more or less the same the thing that really jumps out is the difference in acceleration 18 plays 15 and for that reason i think what i'm going to do here is i'm going to i'm going to sign van der Kolk for 100 million it's a lot um i'm going to try to move on uh, the player that's in the in the squad now uh, and then we'll have when we come back to our uh, if we come back to our s squad view um what we will have is um the van der Kolk will slot in here is an extremely high quality uh, reserve or rotation option uh, we'll go with a, probably a younger player one of these two or, or maybe even one of these guys that we've got out um, in the squad elsewhere um, as the as the sixth forward and then we will feel that when we're in a Champions League knockout match um, if if our main guy isn't available or is uh, tired or whatever we're bringing on a real true impact substitute um that's the that's the plan um and we'll see we'll see how we go with that plan van der kolk is now our player excited to see a global superstar at the club all right so just dropping in from the future then it's uh, now january 2045 in game we've moved forward to the winter transfer window and we'll just finish off this video by seeing how our new signing got on so it's been a successful season again we're now at the stage in this uh, save with Arsenal in the distant future where our club is pretty much completely dominant uh, and the best team in the world. Um, but let's look specifically at the transfers uh, that we did. So you remember that we signed Van der Kolk and also Cardoni. Van der Kolk as the, um, as the, as the outstanding one of the two uh, for 100 million. And uh, he's done fantastically well. So in, in the starts he's had so far, Sol starts five um, substitute appearances. He scored nine goals in the Premier League. High average rating. Everything is good. Um, so he's settling well. His valuation is is very high, and he looks like as our star striker Perkovic ages out, he's going to be uh, an important part of our uh, team for years to come. And so that's even for a hundred million. Obviously, it's it's not that difficult to sign a good player for a hundred million. But this is precisely the tool for the job he's going to be an excellent player for us for a long time 
Um, Cardoni, who we signed, I haven't sent him out on loan yet because the game keeps trying to loan him out to clubs in the MLS, which is a league I've not got loaded. So I'm waiting a bit more patiently for the opportunity to come for him to go uh, to a club in a league that I have got loaded. So one of the big five European leagues or Belgium or Holland. But in the games he has played, he has been just fine and his value's gone up. So in the fullness of time, um, I suspect he'll probably prove, however, to be more of a player trading signing as opposed to someone who makes a significant difference um, in our team. Although if called upon, he has been uh, good in, in limited appearances so far and uh, shows potential to develop further uh, and is the kind of signing that we don't actually have that many examples of because he can play that down the middle with a, with a, a high-ish jump and reach. Uh, so he's done reasonably well. The other thing that happened that was a surprise uh, is that this guy called Lockyer, uh, who is young, uh, English, I think pretty excellent, uh, became available and became available really cheaply. Um, for some reason, he'd been transfer listed at Newcastle, which is his club. I think Newcastle now, sometimes you see in Football Manager that the, the game's AI struggles with overabundant resources and just goes and signs far too many players and you end up with players coming out of those squads uh, at valuations that are uh, pretty good. So that's one of the things that, that the game does. And you know, I'm not sure, frankly, how realistic it is for an outstanding young English striker to never play really that many developmental minutes. The only developmental minutes they played out on loan, they absolutely dominated in the championship and then they didn't get any more opportunities thereafter and available for 12 million. But that's what happened. And so we uh, stole in and, and signed Lockyer if you compare Lockyer to Cardoni, which was the other sort of relatively inexpensive signing, he's not so good in the air, but he's much quicker. And in the game engine in uh, Football Manager, as we talked about earlier in this video, I'm fairly certain that the um, most valuable attributes are acceleration and pace, and Lockyer has them in abundance and has world-class attributes in those areas. And so uh, I think that we'll find that Lockyer will prove to be an absolutely outstanding signing for uh, the rest of his career he probably will stay in the first team squad probably as the backup we've managed to sign him relatively inexpensively um, uh, but he looks like pretty much a premium backup for a Champions League winning style squad which is what we've got so I think that brings this video to an end in this save with Arsenal now we've got to a dominant position I want to put the, comp uh, put, put, put the club into a substantially dominant footing uh, and then once I have done that, I'm going to resign and go and win the African Champions League somehow, some way, uh, which will be probably the next video installment in my Pentagon Challenge series. So if you want to watch that, do hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching this video and I shall see you in the next one.